Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, welcome to the course of organic farming. So, for the last few lecture, we have covered different aspects of the organic farming. How, what is the organic farming is the definition, how is, whatever the different types of materials which are prohibited to use in the organic farming and what is the different types of material which we can use with certain type of restriction, what is the different type of organic source of nutrients may be compost, organic manure, cow dung, urine. We have also learned different type of biofertilizers, different type of bioherbicides, botanicals. We have also learned whatever is the different type of organic weed management option. Similarly, whatever the role of the different beneficial insect and some other microorganisms for organic pest and disease management options. What is the different type of process of the composting, including the vermicomposting, which is very much necessary for our organic farming. We have also known different type of holistic approach of our crop productions like how the legume have plays a very important role, how we can intercrop with the crops, how we can grow legume as a sequential cropping, what is the role of crop rotation, crop diversification, organic kitchen garden. We have also learned integrated farming system and how to manage our livestock within our own farm. And all we have also known there is very much important for the certification and marketing. Unless a farm get duly certified the organic certification, he cannot claim his product is organically produced. So, he cannot sell his produce in the market with some extra premium price. So, always there is a due process for this certification and there is two types of certification. One is the third party or NPOP standard certification for that is very much necessary whenever you want to sell your produce in the international market. And we have also known in the international market, there is a huge demand of this organic produce. And over the last several years, we have shown the enhanced, the increase of growth for this organic produce is very high. USA, European Union, Switzerland and lots of other countries, they are preferring very much this organic produce. But our total trade value of India for this organic produce is very much less. But we have a very diverse climate, we have a lots of crops we are growing. We have a mountain ecosystem from the coastal ecosystem to a very high rainfall to desert like situation. So, we can grow lots of different type of crops and also if we see there are lots of parts of India where farmers are using already very less amount of fertilizer and pesticides just like the hills of the northeastern regions and there is an enormous chance to make this area a organic hub of the world. But for this making organic hub of the world, you need a quality assurance, value brand processing and major factor is the quality certification. And for this certification process, there are lots of procedure and lots of agencies are involved. And this has different type of inspection has been done. Periodical after inspection, whenever this agency will be satisfied that you have managing all your farm organically, you are maintaining all the records, then only they will give the certification. So, in this lecture, I will mainly cover how, what is the different type of inspection going on the organic farm and how you have to deal a farmer, what is the different type of formulation, what is the different type of standard protocol a farmer or a some entrepreneur have to be followed. So, organic certification is a process of certification involving a set of production standards for growing, storage, processing, packaging and shipping that include avoidance of the synthetic chemical inputs which I already told you cannot use any type of this type of synthetic fertilizer, pesticide, hormones, antibiotics. So, you have to make sure when you are going for certification and there will be some inspection, you have to follow all the organic standard protocol. Keeping detailed written production and sales record, that is very much needed. So, you have to document everything from where you are taking the input, how much input you have given what is the different type of produce in your farm and where you are selling, how much amount you have generated. So, you have to maintain this type of records. Maintaining strict physical separation from organic product from non-certified product. 
Suppose in your farm you are growing certain part of your organic or maybe one or two hectare you are growing conventionally. So, there should be physical barrier, there should not be any chance of mixing or if you are organically produced along with the inorganic and undergoing period different type the inspection probably not will be one time there will be different type of inspection and different periodical inspection will be done some by the accredited agencies only you will get the certification. So, purpose of the certification, certification is essentially aimed at regulating production or processing as per national standards for organic production that is NSOP and facilitating the sale of original and quality organic products to consumers certification by the only certification because consumer nowadays very much aware. They want good quality organic food, but they have to be sure whatever I am purchasing it is really organic or not. For that different type of logo is there, different type only after the certification you are getting the logo. So, inspection is very much important to maintain whether there is any type of malpractices doing on or not. So, certification addresses a growing worldwide demand for organic foods I have already told. It is indebted to assure quality and prevent fraud. For organic producer, it identifies suppliers of the products. For consumer side, it serves as a product assurance. So, it is both time they are helping from the grower side, from where will they will the quality input and also from the consumer side. It is essentially aimed at regulating and facilitating the sale of organic product to the consumer. Suppose you are going to the market and some people is telling my produce is organic and another pro, pro, pro just uh, um, seller is also telling my produce is organic. How to know? Only by getting the certification certificate and also getting by the logo in his product which is given by some accredited agency, then only you can judge this is really organic, this is not. Individual certification bodies have their own service marks which can act as a branding to the consumers. Sometimes this service also certification has given due to some agencies with specifications to some foreign countries. Maybe USDA or USA some has other type of regulation in case of you want to sell your produce in the European Union, their rules may be little bit different and you have to always know all these things different type of protocols and rules. So, mainly certification process, whatever we want to export our produce in the international market and we want to very good high foreign exchange. And for this type of certification, inspection is very much important and this certification is called the third party certification. It is given under the program of national program for organic production. So, NPOF certification is a kind of third party certification in which the farm or the processing of the agriculture produce is certified. So, not only the farm, whenever you are doing some post harvest technology, you are doing some value addition of your produce, at that time also you have to maintain organic standards protocols. NPOP certification is facilitated by the Agricultural Process Food and Export Development Authority that is APEDA. APEDA is the highest body that is under the Ministry of, Agric Ministry of Commerce and Industries that is giving the government of India. Why it in case of PGS certification where a farmers group can make with certain protocols they can certify their produce and that is under the Ministry of Agriculture, but that produce you cannot sell outside of the India of the market. So, NPOP that is a national program for organic production has been started in the year of 2001 and it is internationally recognized. It is equivalent to European Union and Switzerland and also there is USDA recognized conformity assessment system. So, if we see the third party certification system what we are doing, our main is to sell our produce in the international market. So, there are a lot of inspection will be there and it is under the APEDA that is Agricultural Process Food and Export Development Authority is the apex organization and they assure the quality of our organic produce. This NPOP launched in the year of 2001. It is equivalent to the European Union and Switzerland and also USDA United States Department of Agriculture has been approved because USDA is very much important because whenever you sell your produce we have to think in the global market 42 percent of the world total production is being consumed by the USA alone. So, you is the major country who are taking this organic food. So, always we have to take in mind how to sell our produce in accordance to their rule, otherwise our product will be they will not take our product and that may, there may be rejected. So, always we have to try to follow these standards and this NPOF standard has been approved by the USDA also and it is operated by the Agricultural Process Food and Export Development Authority I have already told and if you see this is different type of bodies is there. 
because government cannot go everywhere and do the certification process, FIDA cannot go. So, they has given the responsibility to do different organization. Sometimes they have given responsibility to some private organization, somewhere they has given responsibility to the state government. If you see one simply Tamil Nadu organic certification department, TNO CD is there, there are different type of form is there. And each form it is very much clear, all these whatsoever you are doing, what is the different soil management, irrigation management, weed management, paste management, crop management, everything you have to document it. Then only after the use certification will get. You see name and address of the producer, what is the location of the farm, what is your certification requirement you are doing for the wild collection, you are going for honey or you are going for the crop production, certification required under which standard you need, you need for European standard, otherwise you need the NPO standard or if in the another country you need total area of the area, plot, what is the cropping system you are following, name of the crop, extent, what is the input you are applied to previous crop, not only this crop, previously you have using any high amount of fertilizer or not, buffer zone, boundary of the farm, whether there is any contamination chance, whether there may be some chemical in factory outside your farm exist or not, all these things you have to clearly mentioned in this form. Similarly, what about the plant protection measures you are followed, you are using the botanicals, you are using the bioherbicide or different type of other things. What is the source of manure? You are making the source organic manure, whatever we are advocating to grow in the organic farm. While you are producing this manure within your own farm or you have you are purchasing from this outside. If you are purchasing from which source you are purchasing, that is organic or that is not organic. Similarly, loads, where is the seed? Where are you are purchasing the seed from the market? That seed is organic. Also, sometimes if organic seed is not available, it is also you are you, you can apply different type of other seeds but that seed should not be chemically treated. So, source of the seed is very much important, what is the soil type, weed management practices and second part is the participatory guarantee scheme. Everywhere we cannot go this type of long type of standard force of particles, that is there are lots of small and marginal or resource for in our country. They will not go for this type of third party certification. So, what is the role? In that condition, there is some certain part government has also promoted that is called PGS, Participatory Guarantee Scheme Certification, where it is come under the Ministry of Agriculture. And here it, there is no need of so much stringent rules, a farmers make a some producer company or maybe some 5, 10 farmers group and there are some protocol by which they can apply for this organic certification. But that certification is only valid whenever you want to sell your produce within the Indian market. You cannot sell your product outside India. But whenever your intention is to sell your produce outside the international market, only the NPOF standard certification that is the third party certification is the only rule. And for this third participation inspection is a very integral part of that certification process. So, converting farm is organic. It is everywhere sometimes people are growing inorganically, they have used some type of fertilizer or pesticide. Now, they want to convert their farm to a organic. So, initial 3 or 4 years period sometimes they can get a little bit of yield reduction, but whenever the soil fertility is enhanced and usually material optimum level, at that time it can supply all the essential nutrients and micronutrients to the plant. So, yield will be get as per with our inorganic condition. So, in this initial period there are certain rules and regulation, whenever a farmers or any entrepreneurs want to make his farm organic, from the date of the application the he has to rule some regulation. So, there is some conversion time and period is later, only after that he will get the certification tag. So, if you see under supervision, initially a farm is inspected and report is lodged with the certification review committee. If the CRC recommends, then only the farm enters the certification system, it will be placed under supervision for the first 12 months. During this time, first 12 months, the produce or the product cannot be sold as a certified organic or as in conversion to organic. Not only you can sell this is my organic product, not only you can tell it is co already conversion because that also needs some time. After 12 months, after 1 year, the farm may be upgraded in conversion. At this time you can tell my farm is under the conversion to the organic produce. Now you can sell your produce in the market with the conversion tag, but not organically tag you will not get yet. So, in the case other farm activities in non buying certificate, those activities must be clearly separated. There cannot be organic and non organic growing on the same species, same property, same field, same crop you are growing rice, one part you are growing organically and the immediately next part you are growing the rice under the fertilizer or pesticide, then you will not get your certification. Because there is a always a chance of mixing of your produce from this inorganic to organic and whenever you apply some pesticide, 
there may be chance some pesticide will float also to your organic farm. So, there is too much physical separation is needed whenever you go for the certification and inspection agency always will see these types of whether you are maintaining or not. And within a definite area certified has to be converted within 10 years. This is the inspection, sometime inspection is going, so farmers have to clean their field, sanitize up to the field. If a organic farmer wants his produce to be certified, he has to go under a inspection at least once in year. Inspection has been done and inspection has been done by the field inspector and they has been recruited by different type of national agencies which has been given the responsibility by the APEDA for the third party certification. The inspector evaluates the performance of the farm activities with the help of the farmer statements and records by viewing the fields, animals everywhere. Here see you can also check whether statements are recorded correct, whether farmers is doing right thing or wrong thing. He can also record the checks, he can see surroundings, whether any there as fertilizer bag is there, pesticide bottle is there or otherwise different other lots of mechanism also by that he can know whether farmers is doing the right process or not. In case of doubt, sometimes it may be also the doubt in the inspector, the inspector can take samples he is taking the soil sample, he can take water sample, he can also take your plant sample or food produce and he will go for laboratory testing. There are a lot of accredited laboratory also in the India and he can send this produce soil, water, as well as the organic produce this lab and they can tell how much pesticide, whatever the residue is present or not. So, if that is the found then immediately this farm will not get the certification. So, organic inspection is the physical verification, they will come see that is the physical and evaluation of the product and in production. It involves the observations, very much important, judgment by their own judgment when he is doing or not, measurement, he can take different type of measurements with the sample, testing, laboratory. The findings are put into a report which is evaluated by a certification committee and the decision made. By his own, every time he cannot take the decision. So, whatever he has observed, he has to document it in the written form and there will be some apex committee bodies there and they will see after that decision will be taken. The inspection are carried out by the certification body staff or their contracted party. Sometimes they have, they, they do not have their own staff because they have to cover a very huge area for the certification. So, they can also outsource some contractual people and they made the certification inspection on their behalf. So, inspection and certification process is the national accreditation body. There is one NAB, national accreditation body is responsible for giving approval on the authorization of an application inspection and certification agency. Before approval, the NAB have to satisfy itself whether the applicant inspection is doing right or not. On approval given by the NAB, after the NAB approval, that is the national accreditation body approval, the APEDA, I have already told that is the highest decision making body under the Ministry of Commerce, that issues a certificate of authorization and which contains certain protocols. Number one, certification of the authorization number, the name and address of the inspection and the certification agency, the nature of the activities to be covered and the date of issue and date of the expiry. So, what is the process of inspection now I am going? When the auditor or inspector visits a farm, either farm where the production is doing, otherwise a processing unit, suppose turmeric is been production and the turmeric has been being produced as a turmeric powder. So, inspection will not only for the farm, but also the small scale industry or the any way the post value addition or value addition is going on or post harvest mechanism, every way the inspection can inspect. So, the types of crop to be listed, the organic pots should be marked out clearly, their size must be clearly stated and, and the soil management plan, whether what you are giving, how much organic manure is giving or not, whatever the different type of bio fertilizer using. The rotation plan, in organic farming we are always telling to use the crop rotation. Every year you are growing the same crop, then soil fertility is depleting. They are taking some type of ginger, turmeric, taking huge nutrients from the soil. Similarly, whatever they were germplasm or causal organisms is present in the soil, they will stay in the soil and the next year you are growing the same crop, your insect pest and disease attack will be more. So, always we try to change the crop, you are growing this year cereal probably maize, next year you grow for soybean or groundnut. By the also crop rotation, your chance of different type of causal organism will be less, soil fertility will be restored and that is very much necessary when you grow for organically. What is the compost preparation? What is the type of different methods of compost preparation, management, how you store your compost and how you application? This all comes under the purview of the inspection. Similarly, you, sometime you cannot make produce your own, you have not enough livestock. So, you have to import different type of manure from the other farm or from the some other organization. But what is the source? Whether they are following certain rules of procedure or not, 
if there is too much pesticide and other residue is there, otherwise they are giving too much this type of feed, extra feed which is not organic in nature, probably whatever the manure you are purchasing that should not be allowed. And treatments of annual from the source, how they are giving the animal, certain type of vaccination is allowed for the animal, but you are giving too much antibiotic and too much others that is not allowed organic farming. So, these all things have to clearly in mind, the process of inspection now I am coming. Different type of pest and disease control methods what you are taking. Similarly, weed management is very much important. Soil erosion method, other environmental issue, tree planting, whether you have enough tree. So, this also gives a physical barrier, ecosystem health, environment friendly, preserving the groundwater contamination is very much needed. Separation of organic and conventional enterprises. Suppose in your same farm, you are growing two type of activities. In a certain part, you are going for organic, in the remaining part, you are growing for inorganic. So, there should be much distance between this, there should be physical separation and there should not be chance of any mixing, not only in the your production side, but also in the storage and transportation side and harvesting in the handling. So, if you see the standard procedures for inspection and certification of production at the production farms, individual and grower groups, wild collection, what is the different types of process you know. Inspection of parallel production of farms, suppose somewhere he is going organic, somewhere he is going inorganic. Now, whole farm or whole village is not organic. So, in this condition that is called inspection of parallel production, inspection of the processing unit, where you are just making different type of turmeric powder, you are maybe different type of juices, beverages and other things. So, processing unit also come under the purview of the inspection. Similarly, inspection of the grower groups, when not only one farmers, probably 10, 100, 200 farmers make a cluster and they want to certify they are a big area. So, in this condition inspection of the grower groups is important. Inspection of the wild production collection, some time of wild production is needed. Suppose, in the Sundarban and Satar Patar of area, the farmers are used to go in the jungles and they are taking the honey. So, generally most of this honey is organic in nature, but for this wild production collection also there are certain norms before you are getting the certification top of the organic, where you are mixing this wild honey with your common cultured honey. So, there is a some type of rules and inspector has to visit all these things. Inspection of the all the stage of handling, not only in the production, sowing, transplanting, weeding, also how you are harvesting, how you are storing, how you are threshing, what is the food processing, post value addition, every you have to take care of. Inspection of the packed products, you are packing. So, whenever you are packing for selling in international market, there are lots of materials which are prohibited in organic farming. You should not use any type of artificial flavor or artificial any type of agents. So, you have to also make sure these type of things. Storage facility, whether you are storage, there is a chance of any contamination with inorganic. There may be in storage facility, you are using any insecticide in your go-downs. So, everything also come under the purview of the organic inspection. Similarly, the transport facility, whether you are transporting the organic and inorganic same container, if you are just selling the inorganic and organic in the same container, whether there is enough physical separation or barrier is there, so there should not be chance of any mixing. Inspection of the chain of custody and inspection for detection of usually genetically engineered modified. I have already told GMO crops that is genetically modified organisms, where certain maybe some genes of some bacteria like Bt or Bacillus thuringiensis has been genetically engineered to some plants, so that it will attack less in by insect waste. But this type of GMO crops are not allowed till today in the organic farming. So, there may be inspection for this GMO. So, what is the inspection? Standard inspection procedures shall be followed by the inspection and certification agencies. The policies and procedure for inspections shall be documented. So, it is not only the oral, whatever he will see, what will he will observe, he have to document it in written form. And this what is the basis? The basis for assignment of the inspector. You should be clearly give the ground to objection of the inspection by the licensed operator, whether you are allowed or not. So, everything you have to written document. It. So, instruction for the inspection visit, they have given the instruction when to go, how to go, how to your visit, inspection method in which way you are physically or virtually by taking the different type of data or in the farm book logging and also the frequency, you will go only for one in a year or for every cropping season you will visit the farm every time. Inspection requirement is there, sampling, you have to take some time of sample, soil sample, plant sample, water sample from his farm and you have to take periodically. So, there is the sample frequency as you may differ and instruction of the preparation of the reports. So, upon giving, getting the, now the inspector has getting the assignment from the accreditation body. Now, he will go for the inspection for the organic farm. The inspector shall be assigned by the authorized inspection and certification agencies. 
license operator shall have neither the right to choose nor to recommend inspector. So, they cannot tell this type of my inspection, they only only your visit. So, is the for reducing the chance of malpractices or any biasness, this type of standard protocols has been derived. So, if we see in case of the license operator wants to change the authorized inspection certification agency, they shall inform the APEDA stating the reason for that decision. APEDA after verifying records from the previous certification body would allow the license operator to register a new inspection agency. So, a license operator cannot choice by his own to recruit some new inspector without the permission of the APEDA. The license operator shall have the right to be informed about the identity of the inspector before the inspection visit and to raise objection related to any potential conflict of interest. So, there should not be any potential conflict. Suppose, some inspector is also going to organic some farm and probably he is his relative, otherwise he knows him, he is his friend. So, this type of conflict of interest should not be there. Continuous inspection by a single inspector for the sense life period should be avoided. So, same inspector every time going to some particular area. So, there may be chance of some bias. He can be easily influenced by the farmers or some others. Otherwise, he have some bad remarks or bad thinking about that growers group. So, sometimes the same inspector is not allowed, always they have to be changed. The authorized inspection and certification agency shall apply the precautionary measures. The NAB, I have already told this is the highest body, this is the national accreditation body shall be informed about the action taken on the license operator. In case the NAB finds irregularities or infringements related to the application of regulation and certification agency, it shall take further under these rules. So, what is the different type of mandatory checks to be undertaken by the accredited inspection and certification agency during the inspection? For conversion to organic agriculture, whether previously it was not organic. Now, the grower groups or farmers group want to make their farm organic. So, what is the different type of rules for this conversion period? Plants and production side, what is the different type of crops or livestock or different type of produce you are producing? There is rules is different for the collection of wild product and inspection of input storage units near transportation and inspection report is the final. So, whenever the inspection any go, go to and visit a report, the visit and there is some question here, there is some question has made and it is written questionnaire you have to fill during the inspection and the report of the inspection should be comprehensive covering all the relevant aspect of the products. Inspection and certification agencies shall have access to any non-organic associate ownership. Inspection and reports and inspection shall as far as, as a possible possible period and reports shall be designed to allow for elaboration analysis by the compliance might be partial, standard might not be clear, etc. So, inspection visit and report for our organic farm has some date and time of the inspection should be clearly written on that. Who is the person interview, whatever the crops are requested for the certification, fields and facilities visits and the documents reviewed. Similarly, in addition the report set also contains some other factors like what is the his observation, whether he is satisfied, what his comment is different that should be also documented here. Evaluation to the compliance of the standards and certification requirements. And what is the format of annual charges? This annual charges uh, is sometimes vary with, but there is some written form. So, this annual farming is not changed to crop to crop or farmer to farmer. They cannot take charge from one farmer one price and from the other farmer some different price. So, this is generally what is the for fee post-course certificate 1000 rupees, per transaction certificate 500. Similarly, for foreign standard it will be 1000 rupees. And if we also see the Tamil Nadu organic certification department that is a government agency and the APED has given due recognition to this institute so that they can certify a large area under the organic especially for the third party certification to export in the international market. And their resistance fee is also there and sometimes fee structure is given for the power unit of a farmer also as a group of the farmer. So, sometimes this fee may be varied and if we see the fee structure per farm unit corporate or business category. So, when a very the fee is little bit less for a small or marginal farmers. But if a very big corporate, they want to know 1 lakh hectare, maybe 1000 hectare growing for organic, for in this condition very large area or big area, fee is little bit higher. If you see fee for travel time 400 per day, registration fee is 5000 only for the NPF standard. But if you want your foreign standard, particularly you know your produce to be European Union standard or maybe in the USDA standard or Switzerland standard, then it is 25000. So, similarly, if you see it is fee for scope certificate is 2000, but it is 2500. So, there are lots of these type of protocols and these type of cost involved 
for the third party certification. That is why for the third party certification, PGS certification has been introduced for the small and farmers where there is no fee is needed and that, but that is only for the domestic market. So, what is the method and frequency of this inspection? What is the intensity of the production? It will depend. Suppose you are growing 3, 4 crops in a year, then definitely inspection will be more. What is the type of production? Size of the operation, how much? And it also depends on the outcome of the previous inspection and what is record, what he has tell about, whether he has satisfied or not, any compliance is given, whether the input, there is any contamination chance and complexity. So, the inspector and certification agency shall have a written policy on the inspection frequency and insulin include. Inspection of licensed operator shall take place at least annually. Minimum one time he has to visit or inspection has been done the farm, but he can be more than two once time, it may be two time or three time also. And the minimum number of unannounced inspection to be carried out. Sometime inspection will be taken previously, inspector will come. But every time it is every time it will not tell previously. Sometime unannounced inspection will become surprise visit may be occur in your farm to check whether everything is doing good or in organic standard of practices has been followed or not. The manner used is the cost of extra inspection to be borne, timing of inspection shall not be so regular, so it becomes predictable. So, farmers cannot tell oh this month in the morning time Monday he is coming, it is not like that. It can be different type in the different month, different time also of the day also, so that a farmers will be always have to be vigil and he cannot done any other thing of malpractices or other things for the organically production certification. This inspection methods are regularly include, but are not restricted to visit of facility, review of record, calculus of input output norms, production estimates, assessment of production system of operator, interview with the responsible person. So, now analysis and residue testing, this is very much important for our organic certification, especially when you want to sell your produce in the international market in the European Union or USD. Because sometime if there is too much residue of pesticide and other thing in our produce and that has been detected by the foreign lab, so immediately there is a very bad reputation. And they sometimes they cancel the whole consignment of the whole seed, there is a lots of loss for this businessman also the farmers. So, always you have to take sure for that. Testing is a major instrument for organic certification. The testing laboratory shall have the operating manuals and procedure for residue testing of pesticides. The authorized inspection and certification agencies shall have documented policies and procedures on residue testing, genetic testing and other analysis. And these policies have identification of the cases in which samples can be taken, indication of any random sampling requirement, it is a one hectare farm there are lots of produce, it is necessary they have to take the sample of the crop or produce from a particular point of time. They have to take from the different, so 8 samples, 10 samples, 15 samples from random sampling in different area according to their chest he can take and send to the laboratory for the testing. Similarly, instruction to the inspection of sampling methods, post sampling procedure and fixation of the responsibility of the payment of samples should be done. So, in the inspection regime for part conversion and parallel production, part conversion particular part of our farm we are want to convert. In case of parallel we are growing organic and inorganic within the same unit, but there should be some physical barrier. So, in this condition part conversion is the stage or situation when conventional, in conversion or organic production or processing occur in the same unit. And parallel production is defined in any production where the same unit is growing, breeding, handling or processing the same products both of certified organic quality and non certified organic quality. And a situation where organic and in conversion production of the same product is carried out is also production. Suppose a farmer has a 1 hectare of land and in case of 1 hectare land 0.5 hectare is already organic. But after certain time he want to convert whatever the leftover 0.5 hectare area also under converted to organic. So, this is in the conversion, but already 0 0.5 hectare is organic. When this type of mechanism is also going in the same farm, it is also come under the parallel production. So, what is the provision for part conversion in processing? The authorized inspection and certification agency shall ensure that appropriate storage capacity exists, so that separate handling can be done. In the same storage facility, same machine or same unit, we cannot mix the organic and non-organic products. Documentation regarding the production as well always managed and makes a clear distinction between certified and non-certified production. Inspection are carried out at critical times, especially in the time of harvesting, when there are lots of produce generated in the farm, at that time inspection will be happened. Then they will check where the produce coming from the organic farm and produce coming from the non-organic farm, either they are mixing together or not. 
that inspection is done in a timely manner and accurate production estimates are available. So, we should know how much is coming from organic and how much coming from the inorganic. So, in the future time we can judge whether they are telling right or not, they are always following the standard protocol or not. So, provision of parallel production, I have already told what is the parallel production system. If a firm is engaged in parallel production, the authorized inspection and certification agency shall ensure buffer zones are maintained for the demarcation. Suppose we are growing organic farming one hectare area. We also there is inorganic farming another one hectare, but there should be some buffer zone. If this is my organic farm, this is my inorganic farm, so this is called the buffer zone. Here we can grow some different type of crops and others activities, so that there should not be chance of any mixing the produce from this organic farm and inorganic farm. Crops are virtually distinguishable, so there are different type of crops are growing. Here I am growing rice, here I am growing wheat, so there is no ch any chance of mixing because or rice is producing organically not the wheat. So, there will be not any chance, but if you are growing rice and rice then probably there will be some problem. The crops are harvested in such a way that there is relative method to harvest. Suppose we are growing here also rice, here also rice, but here in case of rice we have grown one month before and this crop is one month after. So, their harvesting time will not coincide with each other, they will harvest at different times. So, then it will be easily handled and there will be separation. So, such a system shall be approved by the authorized inspection and certification agency for in individual situation. Inspection for use of genetically engineered product. I have already told any type of GMO that is genetically modified organisms are not permissible to use in our organic farming. So, sometime inspection body can want to know whether GMO crop is using in his farm or not, especially it is very much common in the other part of world where GMO cross is very much popular. So, in that condition what they do? The authorized inspection and certification agency shall implement a system of inspection of potentially use. The authorized inspection and certification agency shall at least once in a year publish and distribute all licensed operators a booklet, a booklet they will give to the inspector and they listing the common name or product name of all the genetical products and such booklet also include seeding and planting stock, animal breeds what they are using what is the input, what is the livestock input, processing and input. When approved they have to also write in some signed documents and whenever there is some chance of any type of contamination, if they detect the organic farmers or growers are using this type of J GMO crops or genetically modified organisms, so immediately there will be chance of rejection of the certification. Whatever the has cost has been incurred by the growers that does not matter, he will not get the certification. There are lots of accredited certification bodies under the NPOP standard that is the National Production of Organic Production and if we see they have given to different private as well as the government agency. How is the different agency? Private agency Bureau Veritas Limited, Ecosart, IMO Control, LACAN, SGS and also the TQ Scott Service Private Limited, Aditi Organic Certification. So, if you see they are giving certification the NPOP standards that is given by the India and our standards protocols. They are also giving certification for the USDA. So, if they certify your products, this company certify your product or your farm, then you can sell your produce to the intern USA and you know USA has the major global market for this organic produce more than 40 percent. They have also different type of sin and if you see, they have also given the responsibility to different type of government organization. That is, if you see Uttarakhand State Organic Certification Agency. Similarly, there is Rajasthan State Organic Certification Agency, Chhattisgarh Certification Agency, Tamil Nadu Organic Certification Agency is there. So, if you see, there is also certain agency which has come under the government purview, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Gujarat Organic Production, Uttar Pradesh State Organic Agency, Sikkim State Organic Agency. So, this is the different type of standards. So, a particular farmer have to choose whether he is area. Suppose, a particular staying in farmers from the Gujarat, he can go for the Gujarat our state organic certification agency and he can tell I want to do my organic farm. So, accordingly there will be some protocols and there will be some method, there will be some inspection. So, you have to approach at the correct body. This certificate and number is there, company name will be there, company address will be there, whether you are doing the national project of organic product standard, otherwise national organic program technical standard of the USA you are following. So, everything you have to maintain and after whenever the initial date of certification will be there, after this scope certification only then you pro ultimately will get the certified. So, grower group certification, 
every time not a farmer individual farm is going organic sometimes some people make a cluster or make a group and they want to convert a little bit bigger area as compared to the a small individual farmer the grower group are organized group of farmers who intend to produce organic product in organic processes and according to the nvsp standard so what they do there is a need of constitution of the international internal quality service that is called ics this is very much needed because they are growing a goer group every individual farmer we are not going to certify we want to certify a very large area so there is need some regulation is different as compared to the individual farmer and constitution of the ics will have a registered legal identity will be there and have a constitution of the organization whatever there will be some rules and regulation there will be written constitution for this organization what is allowed what is not allowed how they will manage and function and it will be presented by an organization a chart international cohort system group certification based on this and implementation will be there which i will show in my next few slides how to go for this type of group group certification with the help of the international quality system and if you see this is the ics international quality system the producer in the group must apply similar production system the farm should be in the geographical proximity otherwise one farm is here and another farm is after 20 km then definitely we cannot make is a group the farm should be nearby you can take as a whole village you can take a whole panchayat so this cluster approach always help you their distance should be minimum they should be neighboring similarly the individual farms hand with holding of 4 hectare and above can also be a part of this good but will have to be inspected separately suppose why this is rule suppose there are hundred farmers they have a very small small area they can grow for this cluster but a farmer has a very big farmer some farmers their area is 4 hectare and above so in that condition even it will be grow for the group certification but inspection will be gone for individual farm because 4 hectare or 10 acre area is a huge area so there may be too much variation one farm and another farm for that's why this type of standard protocol has been derived the grower group shall consist of minimum of 25 farmers can group and maximum has 500 farmers so there is wider flexibility and processor and exporter traders can manage the ICS system but we have to be inspected by the external certification body there is a standard authorization there will be written constitution of the organization but that will be inspected by the additional bodies that is the external certification body only the certification will be done and how to develop an ICS that is internal quality system development of man continually policy procedures identification of the farmers in the group their name everything will be written creation of awareness should be there so what type of crop will grow in a particular methods give necessary training in production and ICS development what is the implementation of policy and procedures and review and improvement of the ICS. So, in this internal quality system manager, there is one post, so, this manager shall develop and implement the ICS and he would be responsible to organize different type of inspection, coordinators, stepped up because suppose there are 30 farmers in a group. So, it is not possible for an individual farmer to contact with the certification agency. Similarly, the certification agency will not contact individual farmers, it will be very time taking and, and very just a high work job. So, in that condition there will be one manager. So, he will take care of the all the farmers group and whenever there will be some contact from the higher authority or accreditation authority, who will be the single point person to contact with. The ICS manager shall define procedure of the following. His rating of the non conformity is a major found using prohibited substance and what you can use in organic farming, what is not prohibited, what is you are restricted. So, you have to maintain all these things and you have to highlight it within his grower groups for imposing sanction or default members of the group. Suppose some farmers is not doing properly, he is using certain type of urea, he is not ready to follow. So, this internal quality manager has the capacity to remove from the group so that due to the fault of only one farmer or grower, the other whole team, the whole grower group will not be punished. The responsibility of the ICS manager shall be to ensure that all the requirements are under NPOF and fully implemented by the group. Now, approval manager or committee will come, qualified person will designate it from the, in the group who take the approval decision. Similarly, field officer will be there, field officer shall be identified from the group one at each production area, the field officers had trained the farmer how to do different type of agricultural extension, whatever the different type of scientific package of practices we have to follow in the farm, from where we have to purchase the seed and manure and other things. Purchase officers shall be identified, who will be responsible for the correct purchase of produce from the farmers. So, there is may be group, there may be 100 farmers, they cannot sell their produce individually. So, there is some other college purchase officer, so they will collect 
different type of produce from this group and he will be the purchasing responsibility to sell in the market. Similarly, warehouse manager, if the farmers group is very high and more be, how de, more be 100 hectare of area, so there may be too much production. So, there will be need to storage in the warehouse. So, in that condition, it is a separate hours, it will be necessary to have a warehouse manager who will be responsible for handling the produce. Similarly, processing. Suppose lots of turmeric is growing in more than 1000 hectare area by a farmers group and they want to produce different type of turmeric oil and curcumin content that is the turmeric powder. So, in that condition there will be also post of processing manager and heat process it may be necessary the processing manager is required to be trained to the handling procedure. So, that not be any problem in getting the organic certification and getting the premium price for these groups. So, what is the typical operation of the structure of the ICS that is internal quality system. Internal quality system manager has the manual and is the different I have already told purchase manager, storage manager, inspection manager, field manager and the processing manager. And after that the internal inspector will contact different type of farmers and there will be a prevail body, there will be external inspection, there will be certification only then they can sell their produce with a organic logo to the international market. So, there is different also needed ICS application form. So, whenever the farmers group have produced and 10, 20, 30, 50, it should be minimum 25. So, 50, 60 or 100 farmers, they have to also in a particular written application form for the application of this ICS. So, you have to write the manager, what is the farmer's name, what is the village name, farmer red race, what is the crops is growing and also there is need in the GPS, sometime there is needed a GPS coding what is the actual altitude, longitude and latitude and also what is the area total, how much crop is growing to the rovi season, what is the you are growing any intercrop or in growing what is the main crop in Kharif and list of the all the inputs, whatever the different type of manures, composting, biofertilizer, green manuring, cow dung and other things whatever you are using in his farm and name of the field situation also owners are organic, they have to clearly write in by their own signing should be there that we are growing organic, we are not applying any prohibited or restricted in our farm and that there is the declaration. So, if you see that information provided is correct and I have understand the condition for the organic produce. So, upon that if any farmers, if he is not doing the organic elite standard protocol, it is not following, then the ICS manager has the capacity to remove from the group. So, that the other group members will not get punished for the, they will not get the premium price of their organic produce due to the fault of a particular one grower. So, if you see what is the different type of procedure the international quality system, registration of members, all the members of this group will be legally registered and they have the provision of document copy of the manual everyone, internal standard document in local language, sometimes it is not necessary every farmers uh, have will understand the English. So, it is probably it is also necessary to make this type of different type of big bulletins and procedure in the local language may be Hindi or Bengali or others. There will be the definition of the production unit will be there field records may be included, farm and transform including the last use, use of prohibited substance will be clearly written in the entry of the farm. So, this type of area you cannot use, fertilizer you cannot use, this type of pesticide you cannot use and there are may be some restriction of the others. So, details and description of the various steps required for the process flow right from the cultivation of the harvest to the sale of the produce, how to have to post harvest handling, how to have the store it, how what is the procedure of the transportation. So, in any case not only the production side or post harvest or the value addition or transport, anywhere there should not be chance of any mixing or contamination, everything should be under the national standard protocol of the organic farming, then only you can sell your produce in the international market and get a very high premium price. Retain contact will be there, annual farm inspection check leave only be there. And due to the operating document, the quality manager shall prepare the operating document. The operating document also contains certain following things like overview map, he will be village or community map. So, he can know there is a very big area where this farmer land is there, where the other farmers land there. So, he can easily inspect different area in a particular day. Similarly, farmer list, what is the different type of farmers in his group? with code name of the farmer total area under crop. This is also very much necessary to know what is the different type of diversified food product is coming this growth. In this case of ICS and when many farmers are growing, it is not necessary every farmers will grow single one crop. So, different type 10, 20, 30 type different type of crop can be grown organically. So, the ICS manager have to know which type of crops is going in which farm. List of farmer who have issued sanction and the risk shall be assessed by the manager. So, critical control point, what is the critical control for the risk assessment? 
measures taken by the farmer did do with the part conversion if some farmers is doing organic but certain part is not doing the inorganic so in this condition there is very much needed conversion period is the needed production rule for the whole production unit seeds fertilization soil management pest management everything production rules should be there for the whole farm harvest and post harvesting procedure should be clearly notified and also the processing and the handling standards so in the internal inspection at least two inspection of the group one in the growing season of the each crop suppose they are growing two season crops kharif they are growing suppose rice and the winter they are growing pea so in this condition there should be minimum two inspection one in the kharif season one in the winter season the inspection will be carried out in the presence of member of his representative definitely there some people who should be there and must include a visit of the whole farm storage of unit harvested produce post harvesting so it is not necessary he will see only the crop the inspection should be also done where he is storing his produce where he is just handling the post harvest where is do the grinding where is doing the packing so everything can be inspected by the inspector the internal inspector will also verify in the internal standards standards had been followed the visit of the internal inspector will be documented in the farm inspection form so it will be clearly in case ics system how many time inspection has been come was he visited and why is noticed and what is observations what is the observation he is told clearly should be written in a documented form and in case of service non compliance suppose supplant time has been given some recommendation is given but a farmer the group is not following this then the result will be reported immediately to the iqs manager and this iqs manager will be taken this iqs managers are upon getting the report from this inspection he can take the decision to particularly take remove one farmer two farmer or five farmers from the group yeah they are not maintaining the standard protocols so sometime external this is the internal inspection by only the group suppose there is 100 farmers there is one manager and there is some inspection time but that is not only assure there is also need of the external inspection by the nationally approved bodies whatever the different type of organization has been given to give the job from the epeda sometimes they will send their inspector to visit in case of also group cultivation of this organic farming the accredited certification body is under inspection after assuring that 100% inspection so fast internal inspection will be done after that the external inspection will come the sampling plan will be done size of the holding if the size is too high 100 hectare they may be take 10 20 30 50 type of samples if holding is low they can take less number of samples to check in the laboratory whether there are uh, any of pesticide residue is present in the beyond permissible limit or not number of the member of the group if there is maybe 25 member you can take less sample if there are maybe 200 sam growers this sample will be more similarly degree of the similarity of the crop system where they are growing same type of crop rice rice or they are growing diversity of crop if they are growing more than 20 crops then sampling will be needed more similarly the contamination local hazard this is the different factors they will organize and how they will the deciding factor how many samples had be taken for the residue analysis the responsible body and the clarification decision the certification decisions are not only limited to the initial approved of the license operators but also approval of products changes in the production disciplinary measures all authorized inspection and certification agencies shall ensure that each decision on certification is taken by the persons different from those who carried out the assessment of assessment so this is said the person who is have gone to the field they has done the inspection they will give the report and upon their report there is some body or committee they will take the decision it is not necessarily the he will take the decision because sometimes there should be some biasness so there may be some default practices so to reduce this chance of these things two separate programs has been done inspection will be done by some other members and whether decision who are giving the certification will be take the from for the other members so the agency responsible for certification decisions are reflected diversity of stakeholder without any single interest predominating and where certification decision are delegated to a small committee or officers the authorized inspection and certification agency shall demonstrate reporting and review so there is lots of standard rules and protocols and they are being maintained only to assure whatever the produce is coming under this npf standards or is third party certification it will be very good quality so that our whatever we want to sell our produce in the international market there would be minimum chance of rejection so license operators are also there so they will give the different type of information the inspection and certification agency shall ensure that each license operator has the time of application for the existing license operator what they will do notification of changes in the standard and relevant procedure without delay 
a valid certificate of other written proof of certificate strength status and the license operator shall have the right to get copies of the inspection findings and other documentation related to the certification of their production. So, inspection and certification, these two is very important whenever you go for organic farming. There will be inspection from the external members by the inspector and after the getting the report the, by the approval of the committee, a grower or a farmer will get the certification. So, the following applies the inspection and certification of the whole production chain and clarifies what is applicable. Each step in the handling of a product shall be inspected at least once annually, not only the production side I have already told, whenever their threshing is done, post harvest management is done, storing is done, every has should be annually. This means not only the farmers, but also the storage units, the processing units, packaging, cement or transportation should be inspected. Any exception to this? shall be based on a document risk assessment and be restricted to situation identified criteria. If there is a some missing, there cannot be inspection. So, there will be clearly mentioned for which purpose, for which cause that has not been done. Otherwise, it will be advisable to got inspection for all the production cycle from the field to ultimately to the transport. Any person who sells a product shall be registered and certified. Normally, this applies until the product is in the final package and is getting the final level. So, packed products. I have already told in organic farming when you are packing the different type of organic produce to sell in the internal market, but also needs of some regulation. Every time is not every item you cannot use in case of packing also. So, the authorized inspection and certificate agency are not obliged to have a system for inspection. The authorized inspection and certificate agency are however obliged to take action when there is reason to believe that the standards have been violated. St similarly, not only the package our storage facility also should be managed properly, so that a farmers only get the certification. Depending on the kind of storage, the product, the packing, the prevailing storage practices, at the time of storage inspection may be required. Also this inspection should be also done, I have already told the transport facility. So, you are transporting different type of produce, organic along with the inorganic, so there should not be any chance of the mixing. Similarly, the chain of custody should be there. So, this inspection and certification is also needed for the wild product. Whenever you are purchasing, when you are getting from the wild purpose, maybe honey or any jungle products, for also there is a certain rules and regulation. And it is clearly codified and mentioned. So, whenever you go for certification for your wild produce, you have to also follow this type of regulations. So, inspection is also occurring, this for approval system is there. With the authorized inspection and certification agency shall inspection and certificate agencies shall not receive any endorsement payment. So, there is not should be any bribes and other things. Approval systems to allow for indicator of the approval on the product itself. What is the different type of mandatory checks to be undertaken by the authorized inspection? For conversion to organic, inspection will be more. Even after the farm, so he is getting the certification, he is get the logo, there will be also periodic inspection. It is not that you are getting one time of certification and logo, there will be no inspection. So, in the future every time there should be different type of inspection, but inspection will be more vigil and more strict whenever you going from organically converted from inorganic to organic. And if you see the plants and products and products and soil ensure, it also the after all the harvesting process, license operator has been done or not and whether process and packaging units of the organic produce can be considered as the production unit and on suspicion of use of unauthorized product is very much important sample for testing will be sale that will be taken and sell into the laboratory. Similarly, for the coil collection of the wild there is also very much effort and the inspector should counter check to ensure that guarantee given by the producer is going or not and record and documentation is very much important whenever go for organic certification. To records are file mantled by the license operator should be checked by the inspector whether everything has been done good or not. To vary the application of the as documented has been done or not. Whether everything has been maintained by the grower groups in correct form according to the national standards or not. Only after that the inspection if the satisfaction then the certification will be given. And they can also give different type of only the storage unit. They can also go for the inspection for the different type of transportation unit. So, by this different process, when a inspector will be very much satisfied that the farmers or grower groups is producing the crop by following all the standard protocols, by different type of growing methods in the production side, management, insect paste, weed management, manure, supply, harvesting, tracing and also where your storing is in good condition and there will be no chance of mixing in the processing unit, there will be any not chance of the storage and transportation also they are clearly physical barrier 
when a farmers or a farmers group or the growers can maintain all these types of standard protocol and they can go for organing, then only after the proper approval of the inspection and by the committee, they will get the certification. And only after that, you can use the organic logo and can sell your produce in the desired international destination. Thank you.